Today we're going to talk about how to install the Big Tree Tech 7 inch display on the Octopus and Octopus Pro. So I need to point out a couple of things because I'm working on a Pro here. So on the Pro, as you can see, there's an MCU right here. This is your processor. So the writing on it's going to tell you what to install. So it's going to say STM32F and then three digits thereafter. The other thing I need to show you is that on the Pro, the TFT display is located right here. Then we have EXP1 and EXP2. On the Octopus version 1.0 and 1.1, the actual TFT display is going to be located in this area. So I'm going to walk you through how to install this. So we're first going to go over to the website for Big Tree Tech. And on the website, you can see that right here we have the Octopus Pro. So I'll show you this one first. If you go to hardware and then you go to pinouts, what you'll see is the TFT is located up in here. So let me zoom in real quick so you can see this. So right here you see J70. Then you see J70 over here. So you see 5 volts, ground, PA9, PA10, then reset. So your reset pin is what you're looking for. So now let's go back over and check the Pro because this is going to be slightly different. So if we go back over here and we click on repositories and then we click or type Octopus, you'll see the Pro inside of here. If you go to hardware and then to the pinouts, you'll see that you have the TFT located right here. And if we zoom in just enough, we'll see that it's reset on the bottom. So it's gonna be right over here. So then you have your five volts at the top. So now that we know that, let's go back over to the actual desktop in a second and see if we can set this up. So over on the desktop for the computer, you can see that we still have our MCU and then we have our display port right here. So let's flip this over and take a look on the back. So on the back of here, what you could probably make out is that there's an RS-232 port. That's going to be our TFT port. Then EXP1 and EXP2. So to connect these, I'm going to grab the cable that doesn't have the breakout side on it. And I'm going to find the notch connector and I'm going to connect it right down in here. Then I'm going to flip this over for a second, move these out of the way. And as you can see, there's a reset pin hanging out here. We know that's now on the bottom. So we're going to plug it in right here with the top four pins. Then with the hanging pin, we're going to plug it in right here. Now, obviously this is going to be flipped over when it's the other octopus board having trouble getting that in there. There we go. So let's do EXP1. On the board, we're going to take the notch connector, plug it in. Then we're going to take the notch connector for the rear side of this. This is for the legacy mode for Marlin and plug it in right here. Then we're going to do EXP2 where we plug in the notch connector and we're going to rotate this over and we're going to connect the other one right here. So if we power this up now, so if I plug this in and then I apply power to it, you'll see it come up. And as you can see, there's a regular display. It says no printer attached because we haven't configured Marlin yet. But if you hold this down, this will give you the option to switch between modes on your actual display. So I'm going to leave it on this mode for the moment. And I'm going to power down the board for a second, pop out the SD card that's down here and place it in this card reader so we can actually configure it. 
So now I'll plug this into the computer. As you can hear, there's a beep, but we'll go back over to the desktop now. And I'm going to bring up VS Code. Inside VS Code, I already have downloaded and extracted the current Marlin version, which is 2.0.9.3. So I'm going to click on Explorer, Open Folder, then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, my Marlin folder, then my Next Marlin folder, then Select Folder. Inside here, first thing you'll see is the platform io.ini. And as you can see, the default environment is set currently to the Mega 2560, which is its default environment. So we're going to have to configure that. So we'll go over to Marlin, then Source, then Core, then Boards.h. We'll do a Control F to search on Octopus. And that'll bring us to the Pro, which we're currently using. So we'll copy that. And then notice over here, there's two different types of chipsets. There's an STM32F446, and then there's an STM32F429. The one that we're actually working with is the 446 version based off of what is written on the MCU that I showed you earlier. So we'll keep that in mind, but we'll minimize this and then go to configuration.h. We'll scroll down to where the motherboard is and paste this in then we'll change the first serial port here to negative one. That'll be for the motherboard's USB. Then the second serial port we have to actually enable, which is right here. So we'll hit control forward slash to remove the comments. And we'll change this one to one. Now these are interchangeable. So the second serial port and the first could have one and the negative one. But I like to do it this way. Now the speed is default to a quarter million bits per second. So you may have to adjust that and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up the actual display. So I'm gonna search on, let's see, RepRap underscore discount. Now there's two in here, so it might not be the first one, so I'll hit enter a second time, and that'll bring us to our display, which is the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller right here. And so we'll hit the control forward slash again to remove the comment so we can enable it. Then we'll search on SD support because we need to enable that. So we'll do a control F and we'll search on SD support and see if we find it, which we do. So we'll hit control forward slash. Now there's different things you can configure in here for the legacy Marlin display. Obviously there's different settings for languages as you can see up here. Mine is currently defaulted to English, but there are other two letter codes that can help you do German. Uh, it looks like Danish, Chuck or Shuck, uh we got Polish in here someplace, French, Ukrainian, and numerous other languages. We can also do Japanese letterings, or we could do Cyrillic, but basically we're going to leave that default for now. If you have trouble with your SD card, you can always turn on the CD CRC checking, which is cyclical redundancy checking. But for now, we're going to leave that alone because we may not have an issue. There are other settings that you can set in here for your display, which I'll cover in some tutorial in the future, but there's lots of different things you can do for your menuing. So now that we have that configured, there is one issue that someone has pointed out where their SD card sometimes does not work on their display for the seven inch display or any other display for the TFT. So I'm gonna show you the fix for this. If you go to configuration advanced and you search on, let's see, control F, then do SD card underscore connect shun. 
hopefully we'll find this. If I spell correctly. So obviously I'm not seeing it here. So let's do a search on SD card, pardon me, underscore connect. And there it is. So right in here, you can see that it's defaulted to this display, but it's commented out. If you want to change it, you would hit the control forward slash to enable this functionality. And then you have three different choices here being CD, being the LCD. You have onboard, which is defined up here as the controller board. So it's going to be the SD drive there or you have custom cable. So I'm not gonna go on a custom cable because it's a little bit more detail with pins, but I'm gonna leave it on LCD. If you want it on your board, then you would change it to on board. So now we need to set up the build. So over here, you can see that it's the Mega 2560, but we need to set the default environment to ours. So we'll go to the I and I, then we'll find the STM32F, and we'll search on Octopus. And what you'll see here is the configuration for the Pro, <coughs> excuse me, and the chipset in this case is STM32F446. So we're gonna copy this. And if you do have the other board, it's gonna be the 429, which is gonna be down here for the default environment. So let me close out of this, go over to platformio.ini, paste it right here. And then what I'm gonna do is click the garbage can down here for clean, for platform IO's plugin that we have for extensions. And then I'm gonna click the checkbox to build it. Now keep in mind, the build may fail on the first try. If it does, hit the checkbox a second time. And if there's an error thereafter, correct the very first error that you come across because all the other ones may be a cascade of errors due to the first one. So this one looks like it's doing kind of well if you can observe inside of this folder where it's building along for the .pio folder. So if we're get or if we do get a good build, it will be firmware.bin in this folder. So if we see that it's not doing well, but in this point, it looks like it's doing well. So what I'm gonna do in a second is actually open up the folder. So it did finish successfully. So you can see the firmware.bin. So I'll right click on that, go to reveal and file explorer and I'll place it on this drive. Now notice I put a G code file on this. I also put a G code file on the drive for the actual build. So this is the SD card. It's also on the USB drive and it's also on the SD card plugging into the display. So I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna send this to the USB drive down here. And as you can see, it says firmware.bin, which we just built. The previous load is in all capital letters ending in cur, meaning current. And that means that it's successful. If you ever wanted to reload this, you would rename it to firmware.bin in lowercase letters. So what we're gonna do now is go over to the workbench and we're going to pop out the drive. We're then going to plug the drive in over here. Then we're going to connect the power. And this may take a second to load. Now, as you can see, it says no printer attached. Now, it just went away because it found the actual firmware setting. But there is another case where it will say no printer attached. And if you go to menu, then you go to settings, then you go to connection, then you go to S port, I believe. And then you can see right here, it's the first port. If you change the speed, 
to 115200 and you go out of here it says no printer attached so to fix that you would go into here and change it to the speed of your board and as you can see now it's back to being attached so let's check out the other functionality real quick for the drives so we'll go back and what we'll do is we'll go to print and we'll check to see if there's a TFT drive which is the one on the board and as you can see it doesn't see the TFT SD but the onboard one give it a second so apparently it doesn't see that. So what we'll do now is we'll power this down for a second. We'll check to see if we can see it on the SD drive and this. So I'm gonna power this back up and see if some of this is fixed. So I'll show you the fix for this in a second, but go to the printer you now can see the TFT drive, that's good. You can see the UDIS drive, and then the onboard SD. Apparently you can't see that one. Now sometimes it takes a second to get it working. So I'll show you where the fix is for that because you probably wanna see that. So if we go back over to the desktop, And then we go to Configuration Advanced. You can see that it's set to LCD. So if we change this to Onboard, copy it, paste it here, then click the checkbox again. <coughs> Excuse me. It's gonna take a second to actually build. So while this is building, I'm gonna go over to the actual workbench, power this down, pop out the SD drive, place the SD drive inside of here and place it back in the computer so you can hear the beep. Now let's go back over to the computer. And as you can see, it's almost done building. So we'll watch this for a second. And as you can see, it's almost done. So we've got our firmware.bin right here. So we'll right click, we'll do reveal and file explorer. We'll right click again and we'll send it to the actual D drive. So we have a new build. You can see the previous one that just loaded a few moments ago. We'll pop this out and we'll go back over to the workbench. We'll place this SD card back in the drive down here, then we'll plug it in, and we'll give this a second, then we'll click on print, we'll give it a second to actually realize where it is, we'll go back, we'll go back into print, there's the drive, and you can see it. So those are the ways to resolve the issue with being able to actually use the SD drive in multiple places and configure this. Now, you can also hold this down and go to Marlin mode. Inside Marlin mode, you can click down once, go to change media, or I'm sorry, print from media, and you can see the drive. Now, depending upon where it's located, you'll be able to access it. So thank you for taking the time to watch my tutorial and please like and subscribe and for my patrons as well as the people on PayPal, I will place a thank you message at the end of the tutorial. So thank you very much. Take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.